The Honourable Member for Wolseley. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Can someone from this government please explain to Manitobans what their position is on the recent federal proposal to cover the damaged nuclear reactor in Pinawa in concrete? <laughs> the Honourable Minister of Health seniors and active living. Well, Madam Speaker, we're always uh, interested to hear different uh, suggestions and ideas as it comes from uh, the federal government. Uh, we'd like to hear more uh, ideas when it comes to being real partners in things, uh, for example, as health care. We know that they are continuing to provide less support when it comes to health care, but if they have ideas in terms of protecting uh, the good folks in Pinawa and protecting our environment, we are always willing to stand and work with the federal government or anyone who wants to better the environment, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, and yes, the other shoe is about to drop. I appreciate the health minister's intervention, bizarre though it was. Um, this is actually the jurisdiction of the Sustainable Development Minister. I'm wondering if she might be aware that the federal government's proposal for the damaged nuclear reactor in Pinawa runs directly contrary to Manitoba law, specifically the High Level Radioactive Waste Act, which says don't entomb nuclear long-term radioactive waste in Manitoba. I'll table the act for the minister's reference. Thank you so much, and thanks uh, so much to the member opposite. Uh, we continue to work with the federal government on a number of different initiatives. Uh, you know, just recently today, as a matter of fact, we were talking to the Minister of uh, Natural Resources with regard to softwood lumber, and we will continue to uh, discuss these issues with Manitobans and with the federal government. Uh, this government, as I said earlier, is uh, the environment is a priority, and we will continue to address uh, issues regarding the environment, such as issues that the members opposite never address, such as surface water management and climate change. All right, attempt number three uh, to bring this government up to speed. The minister has actually written a letter to longtime nuclear watchdog activist Mr. Dave Taylor, who's very kindly joined us today in the chamber, to offer his expertise, which is clearly needed, to this minister and her government. I hope she will commit to meet with Mr. Taylor to learn more about what she needs to be doing, because her own staff person has said that the province will actively make its views known as a member of the federal review team. Why is she going to tell the federal government what their position is on a damaged nuclear reactor, and they won't tell management? Manitobans. We're always interested in the expertise of Manitobans, Madam Speaker, and in making sure that we take the right steps to protect our environment here in Manitoba, but I am, and I have to, Madam Speaker, uh, comment on the fact that the members opposite uh, are now expressing interest and concern about a federal issue when they were totally silent, totally silent when the federal government was talking, talking about bringing in CPP without any enhancements to protect seniors at all. Order. We stood up for Manitobans while they sat on their hands. On health transfer reductions, Madam Speaker, they had the opportunity. The federal government was reducing by half the amount of the increase in health transfers. They had no views whatsoever, sat on their hands, totally quiet. I appreciate Order. that. Also, Madam Speaker, when the Factory of the Future is $60 million, $60 million investment was threatened by the federal government. They sat on their hands, cuddled up with the Prime Minister, and had nothing to say. Now they're interested. Good for them. Keep up the good work. 